This video is brought to you by Nano, creators of virtual reality tools for immersive molecular visualization and interaction. Follow the link in the video description to download Nano and explore molecules yourself. Okay, so secondary structure. Ordered patterns or 3D arrangements on localized regions of the backbone of the polypeptide chain. So we're specifically talking about H bonds between amide hydrogens and carbonyl oxygens of the backbone. And when we say ordered patterns, we're specifically talking about alpha helices and beta pleated sheets. And in this video, we're going to focus on alpha helices specifically. Okay, so alpha helices. So the alpha helix is this little right-handed helix here. It looks like a little spiral. And in ribbon diagrams, it's represented like this. Okay, and that kind of does look like a ribbon. Okay. Um, and these alpha helices are held together by hydrogen bonds. And the hydrogen bonds are specifically parallel to the axis of the helix. And the axis of the helix is basically the line that would be running through that helix. Okay, so the H bonds or the hydrogen bonds that hold this helix together run parallel to that line. In fact, these little dashed blue lines that I've got over here represent those hydrogen bonds. And those, of course, are specifically the hydrogen bonds between the amide hydrogens and the carbonyl oxygens. Okay, so this dashed blue line here, or these dashed blue lines here, are basically that hydrogen bond. Okay, which again, just to reiterate, are running parallel to the axis of this helix. Okay, now the R groups that are. Um, on the amino acids that make up this alpha helix actually run um, sort of they stick out perpendicular to the axis of the helix right so they're sticking this is the axis these guys are kind of hanging out this way okay and that's actually an important thing to note okay so here's a closer look at the 3d version of the alpha helix coming from this protein over here which is myoglobin so I mentioned that the alpha helix is right-handed. It's a right-handed helix, which basically means that you can follow the chain of the helix with your right hand if you curl upwards sort of towards your fingers. Uh, whereas with your left hand, you can't exactly do that, right? This is not a left-handed helix. Now, another thing is that there are approximately 3.6 amino acids per turn, which basically means that each turn of the helix has around three and a half amino acids covered. So if we go from here, uh, this is, we got here an NCC. So if we go NCC, 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 that's about four amino acids, right? But from around here to here, there's around three and a half. So 3.6 amino acids per turn approximately. Now, if I bring that ribbon back, we can see here that the, uh, the R groups are sticking out sort of perpendicular to the axis of the helix, right? The axis is going straight up and down like this, right? And so we can see here that the R groups are sort of sticking out perpendicular to that. Now, alpha helices can have their structure disrupted, okay? So, uh, and there are a number of things that can disrupt the structure, okay, including heat, bulky side chains, electrostatic interactions, and the amino acid proline specifically. So heat is uh, sort of sort of intuitive, right? Heat uh, disrupts hydrogen bonds, and hydrogen bonds are what hold together the alpha helix, right? So if enough heat is added, those hydrogen bonds can be broken, and the alpha helix can be basically denatured, okay? And that's pretty intuitive. Um, but why is it that bulky side chains can disrupt the alpha helix? Well, imagine an amino acid with a bulky side chain. For example, phenylalanine has the benzene ring basically in its side chain. Let's just say that these two R groups are specifically um, the side chains of uh, phenylalanine. So we have one aromatic group there and then another one right next to it. And these groups are pretty big. And so they're simply going to sterically hinder each other, right? They're going to be super close to each other like this and they're going to want to repel, right? They're going to kind of push away from each other. When they push away from each other, that's going to cause this alpha helix to bend in a way that it shouldn't, right? So this portion will be strained. And um, that'll, of course, disrupt the alpha helix, okay? Now, sort of on a similar note, electrostatic interactions um, can cause basically the same thing to happen. 
So let's just say, for example, these two R groups are the side chain for aspartate, and aspartate has uh, a charged carboxylate group in its side chain, right? Negatively charged carboxylate group, negative charged carboxylate. So if we have two aspartates right next to each other, these negative charges are going to repel, right? So they're going to kind of push away from each other and cause the alpha helix to kind of bend awkwardly in this way, and that'll disrupt the, the alpha helix sort of basically in, in the same way that the, the bulky side chains do, right? They're just kind of causing the alpha helix to bend in a way that it wouldn't naturally, okay? Now, uh, that's if we have like charges. What if we have opposite charges? They would attract, right? So if, what if I had an aspartate next to a lysine? And so we have a lysine with that uh, ammonium ion on it. Um, and so now we don't have a situation in which the... Um, uh, the charges repel. In this case, they're actually going to attract, so they're going to actually bend towards each other. But that's still going to put a strain on the alpha helix, right? The the helix is sort of going to bend in a way to allow those charges to come closer together. Either way, we're putting a strain on the alpha helix that wouldn't normally be there, okay? And so that's why electrostatic interactions can disrupt uh, and denature the alpha, hel alpha helix. Now, proline, proline is kind of unique as an amino acid because its side chain actually goes back uh, and binds uh, to the nitrogen of the NCC backbone of the polypeptide. And so when you have, when you, for example, if you have a proline just sort of added into the alpha helix, that would, um, that can disrupt the ability of the, um, the hydrogen bonds to basically exist in the alpha helix. And of course, the hydrogen bonds are super important in holding the structure together. That's one thing, but another thing is just that um, that R group sort of just comes back and binds, um, and, and that that causes the the helix to sort of bend or turn in a way um, that that it is not supposed to, and so um, proline is said to sort of cause kinks or bends to the alpha helix that denature and disrupt um, its structure. Okay. All right, so I'd like to further explain what's going on as far as the disruption of alpha helices. So, of course, the R groups here stick outward like this. And, of course, if they're big and bulky like they are in... Actually, well, if we look at these here, we've got a leucine right here, and then we've got a, another leucine up here. And they're not very large groups, but if they're replaced instead by phenylalanine, large sort of aromatic groups right next to each other, then they would repel, and they'd put a strain on the helix, sort of bending it awkwardly like that. Similarly, if these two residues were charge groups and they were either attracted to each other or repelled one another, they would also put a strain on the helix, right? If they're attracted, then um, that would sort of um, strain the helix in such a way that it would bend together like this. And if they were repelled, then it would sort of bend the other way. Now, of course, if there were a proline in the chain, the R group sort of comes back and binds the amide nitrogen. So um, that causes two problems. One, of course, is that it puts a little bend in the um, the actual turn of the helix, um, and on on top of that, the uh, the R group coming back and binding the amide nitrogen makes that nit amide nitrogen unavailable for hydrogen bonds, which of course are super important because they actually hold this um, this entire structure together. Let's quickly take a look at these two different alpha helices here. Uh, we got this one over here to the right and uh, this one over here to the left. They're both identical. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this one on the right and we're going to highlight all of the amino acids that are in it. Okay. And we're going to mutate every single one of those amino acids into a proline. So we bring this mutate menu over and we're going to turn all of those amino acids to prolines. Now nothing immediately happens, but we know proline messes up the structure of the helix. So we're going to bring this minimization tool over, which is going to sort of, to some extent, show us what might happen with the bond angles when we add those prolines in. So clearly right away, we can see how the, uh, the, the structure changed, right? It sort of flared out everywhere. The atoms are sticking out more. The ribbon itself even sort of bent outward a bit. And um, that makes sense, right? Given that that proline sort of uh, adds these kinks or these bends and kind of ruins an alpha helix. And you would imagine, of course, that that would also affect the um, the ability of this thing, the hydrogen bond, to hold, hold together entirely. So um, obviously, this isn't absolutely perfect, right? We would expect this entire structure to, to fall apart. But this minimization tool gives us an idea of what's actually happening with those kinks and those bends really messing with this alpha helical structure, right? We can see here, just a closer look after removing that highlight 
um, right here and, and in here that it flared out compared to the left side. Um, so uh, it's pretty clear that that right ribbon is different. So um, that's basically it with the Alpha Helix. I do want to mention that uh, it's worth noting that the Alpha Helix can be disrupted by a multitude of things. And despite the fact that the cumulative effect of the hydrogen bonds holding together an Alpha Helix is pretty strong, um, there are, are, are a bunch of things that, that, um, that can denature an Alpha Helix. And that's worth mentioning, especially is that um, they are less stable relatively than, um, than beta pleated sheets, which are um, less susceptible to denaturation, as we'll see in the next video. Hope that video was helpful. Thanks for watching.